I'm going to start, I'm going to talk just very briefly about monochrome images because they're, they're not really appropriate for maps, so I won't get into it too much detail. But on a lot of days where it's a bit hazy or it's overcast, the light can be a bit meh. So when you take your photos, they don't look very interesting. So this one, for example, is on the, the Great Ocean Road on the coast of Victoria. It's an absolute beautiful place. But it doesn't look all that beautiful in this shot because the light's kind of crap. But the composition of the shot, I really liked it. So I changed a little bit and I used monochrome. I increased the contrast quite a lot. That brought me into an issue where all of my shadows went deep black. So I had to edit my shadows then to bring them up up higher in the greys so that they didn't look completely black. Um, and you can see that it's made a fairly dramatic sky and it's made the, the road surface and the path through the road a lot more obvious than it was when we looked at the other shot. So if I just quickly flick back to the other one, you can sort of see the difference between the two. So I personally like that. Now you can do the same kinds of edits to a colour image, but they come out looking very artificial. So when you put a lot of contrast into a colour image, generally it doesn't look that great. But when you put a lot of contrast into a monochrome image and you really force that contrast hard like I have, um, it comes out nice and still looks good. So if we go on to the next one, this is a place called Gibson Steps and it's uh, near the rock formations called the Twelve Apostles of which there aren't 12, but that's okay. Governments lie to everybody. And, and again, this image is kind of nice, but it's not awesome. It's sort of nice. So if you change it to monochrome and boost the contrast again, you get a really striking difference. So if I just flick back and forth between them, it is actually the same image. I've moved the crop slightly as well. I also straightened my horizon because, you know, it's meant to be straight, but it wasn't that day. Oh, well, we all get that wrong sometimes, don't we? <laughs> so it is definitely the same image, but it looks totally different. Now, interestingly, this one won me a competition and the judges agreed that it looked a hell of a lot better than that one because I did actually submit both just to sort of see what happened. So well worth doing. So we get into a situation and this one starts to be more applicable to maps. Um, I've just got a question here. Always wonder what type of images to turn into monochrome. Uh, to be honest, give it a try and see how you go. Just about any image can be changed into a black and white or monochrome image. And truth be known, they're not really monochrome anyway because it's not black and white. It's a whole series of greys. So when they still get called monochrome, they still get called black and white, even though they're really grey, lots of greys. So I would suggest for any kind of image that you want to try, Go for your life. Now, in this next one, I'm going to be slightly political here. Uh, there's a, a huge movement around the world for Black Lives Matter. And since I happen to have a black image in this one, I did want to call that out that I am an ally and I am supportive. I would hope everyone is really. So when you get into the dark situation, so this is, you can just see them. There's a couple of bottles of alcohol there my favourite Irish whiskey and the gin that my wife likes to drink <laughs> sitting next to each other. It doesn't look really good, does it? And that's just a normal photo taken with the, uh, the phone. So it didn't come out very nice, kind of boring, very dull. If you put a photo like that on maps, nah, it's not great. So I just, first thing I did was I used Google night mode. Now, it took a long time to do this coming out of the dark. But it did actually work pretty well, I have to admit. It made a, a relatively nice image. Um, it's pretty clear and you can certainly see everything. So the technology these days can do some really amazing things that even a year ago we couldn't do. So well worth using that technology. Now this is with Google Camera on the Pixel, but there are similar modes on the other phones 
with either with the Google camera software if it runs on your phone, or if it doesn't, a lot of the other ones like um, Huawei and Samsung have got their own apps that now have a night mode as well. They might not call it night mode, but it's the same kind of deal. And I'm sure they've paid their patent fees to Google. <laughs> Maybe. So the next shot I did was I wanted to add some light. So I actually used this. And I used this, this candle. Watch me burn my fingers. So I basically used a candle. Um, in the video image, you can't see a lot of light coming off this, but with a still, the still's able to gather a lot more light because you've got a longer exposure. The video is trying to do 28 frames a second, so it struggles a little bit, naturally enough, but that's okay. But you, what you will notice is that the camera light's really warm, even on, on just here on my face. It's, it's a really warm sort of color, and it brings up reds, yellows, oranges, and that sort of thing. And similarly, in the whiskey, Oops. Similarly, in the whiskey, um, it's brought up that lovely golden color of the whiskey, which is kind of cool, just from a simple candle. Now, again, I still use night mode on the phone, but the images actually look quite a bit different between the two. So if I just flip back and forth, if this will let me. So there's the normal night mode. The color's not all that warm. It's I'd almost go it's slightly white, slightly blue going to here suddenly you get much more warmth so you can really see the difference in what you're getting there but the other thing that you can see if you look at the 1829 on that bottle it's quite clear in the candle shot but in the night mode shot it's kind of gone so just at that tiny amount of light makes so much difference now this is where we're going to get interactive a little bit for the first time so if you're in a dark room if you brought along a candle um, have a look at the things around you when you've lit things up with the candle. So I did my head before, so I can light this one up again. And you're welcome to do this with me if you're in a dark place. We won't spend too much time on this because I realise not everybody's in the dark and it'll get kind of boring for the people who can't see it. But if we, for example, look at this little penguin and we take the light away from him, you almost can't see him, but you bring the light back and you start to see some quite good detail and coloration on him. Same sort of thing with the little bunny. So with light colored things, you might notice the change from the black penguin to the yellow bunny. Uh, that does actually change quite a bit. So the yellow really shows it quite well. So you can probably guess what one of your tasks is this week, can't you? <laughs> We'll get into that properly a little bit later on. So let's move on to a different kind of light source. So in this one, I've got this, which is an LED camping lantern. I wonder how this is gonna look on YouTube. This is gonna be kind of funny, I think. But this thing's really bright white, but it's got an enormous amount of blue in the light. So I don't know if you can see it on my face or not. Who are those old ghost movie games? <laughs> um, but it's very, very blue. So you can certainly see it in image there. So if we go back and forth in this image between the candle one, which is warm and red and nicely colored, and then we go to this camping lantern, well, it's bright. I'll certainly give it that. And <clears throat> excuse me, I'll just have a drink. And very similar to the flash in your phone, this is the same kind of LED. They're called Cree LED, C-R-E-E. -E. Um, they're very bright, very white, lots of blue. And it's the same deal that you get on your phone. So if we look at our little friend, the penguin now. So uh, how handy that my phone's giving me a matching YouTube result. Thanks, Google. What you can see is this is so bright that's actually blowing out on the camera. So it's too bright for the penguin, really. Um, and it'll get worse with the yellow bunny. So the yellow bunny, he's almost white now, I can see in the video. So you sort of see what happens. And this is why I tell people to not use your phone light without putting something between it. So whether that's a napkin, just to bring the light down a bit, same deal. So we'll now see, see how you can see the yellow again in the bunny? 
So if you've got some kind of bright light that you want to try now, go right ahead and do that. While we move on to the next kind. So the next one is a flashlight. Now this particular, I won't shine it straight at the video camera too much because it'll get a bit annoying, but this particular one um, is called daylight. So it's a different kind of LED. So if I try and show the two together, um, I'm not sure how well this is going to work really on a video, but they're both very bright. I don't want to shine them directly in there, but you can probably see that the color from this one is a bit different. So it's more natural color, whereas this one has got too much white in it. So that's a daylight CREE LED, and it helps light things up properly where you get the right kind of expectations met in the colors of things. And it, you can see all of the detail in the bottle. You can see the 1829. You can see some of the features in the label and the embossing in the, card, in the cardboard label. But the other thing you can see is the lighting's not even anymore. So there's a, a quite a diagonal shape like that or a triangle shape to the light that's coming onto the bottle. So you can certainly light things up, but it's not even, so it doesn't work that well. Then we'll go on to the last one, which is the camera flash units, which I do actually have down here. And I better turn this light back on so you can actually see them and so that I can find them because of course they're black. So this first one is called a ring flash. This is an old fashioned kind of flash. You don't find these a lot anymore. But if you do macro photography, or if you're doing food photography, these things are fantastic, but they're hard to get. I think, I'm not sure if it was Ananda gave me this or Tony Tullock gave it to me. It might have been Tony Tullock, I think. But they also use this, this one uses this old fashioned sync cord, which fortunately my camera still supports. Not all of them do these days. The more modern variety that most people will use, so ignoring studio stuff, is the hot shoe flash. This one is a whopper. Um, this flash is 180 watt seconds, which I think it's still the most powerful battery powered flash you can get your hands on. And it gets all of that light from just a handful of little AA batteries. And if you were observant there, you'll see I dropped one of them on the floor. That's okay. But you get an enormous amount of light at them, out of them and you've got to use them well and you've got to use them carefully. Using one of those things at its fullest power, the 180 watt second one, um, if you put that onto a model through a concentrator, you'll actually give them sunburn. It's that bright. When you're using it in this case, so this shot is the ring flash, and you'll notice that there's a huge big flare on that on the top of the bottle, and the Bombay Sapphire label, that's totally ruined by the flashlight. So you've got to be really careful with flash. You've got to use it discreetly and you've got to use it away from whatever you're trying to take a picture of. So in this case, I was deliberately right up close to it because I was kind of trying to wreck the shot, to be honest. Uh, I was just having a quick look through the questions. Yes, you can buy a ring flash at aliexpress.com from Ollie. Uh, you can also get them at camera shops. So there, some camera shops will still have them and handy things to have you can buy versions that will work with your phone and that you can trigger with your phone i've seen some recently that are bluetooth flashes which i've been meaning to get one of those and you can also get solid lights for your phone too so if we want to add some other sorts of light and you saw one of these things before these are called poi i don't know if you've ever met them before but they're for spinning and you'll see what I do with it later on. Um, I won't do my POI routine because I just don't have the room here to do that. Let's try and turn this thing off. But because these things have lots and lots of different different colours, maybe if I turn this light off, you'll be able to see this better. So you can cycle through all the different colours that they can do. And sometimes when you move them, they do different colours again. That one's going back in red and yellow. That one's got reds and greens and blues, whites and blues. But you get the idea. But anyway, um, so you can certainly introduce colored lights. 
Now, when you're working with camera flash, there are things called gels. It's a bit of an old fashioned concept. They're not used all that much anymore, except by pretty serious strobists. Strobists are people who use flash a lot. Um, you can change the color of the light to be what you want. Now, you might do that for an effect. So you might decide you want a deep red scene. So you put a, a red or a purple and perhaps a blue cellophane over the top of your flash and you'll change the colored light into be really deep red. You need a lot of color to change a flash because they're so bright. Or you can change it to make it more natural. So in this particular case, I, I would be trying to aim for some natural things. Now, when you're using these small light sources, they reflect in the bottles. So it's not a great outcome. But if you had nothing else, you could use it. So the other thing that's really handy and in your tools, so the, the three common tools that I use are my big flash, the ring flash, and a tripod. Tripod's really handy if you've got a traditional sort of camera rather than the phone. So tripods can work with the phone. You can get mounts for your phone. Um, but your phone can't do a really, really long exposure. So the absolute limit, I did notice Google camera has now gone up to a minute and a half for its longest exposure. But compared to what a, a real camera can do, that's nothing because these things can expose us until their battery runs out. And that's when they'll finally die. But mostly you do it in a few minutes. So tripod's good for keeping things steady. This particular one is a travel tripod. So it's not as sturdy as the big professional tripods that I, I use if I go into a studio or if I'm um, doing a shoot somewhere with a person. But it's fantastic for traveling because it weighs almost nothing. It's about 800 grams, which if you're carrying your carry-on luggage around, I like to take my camera gear onto planes. I don't like to put it into the hold because you've all seen those people load bags. They just smash stuff. Not to mention who's lost their bags traveling. I'm sure plenty of us have. <laughs> so if you lose your underpants, no, it's not that big a deal. You just get your credit card out and you go and buy some new ones and maybe they'll turn up eventually. But if, imagine if you lost your camera equipment. So all of my stuff is insured through a special insurance policy. But if I lose it, it's still going to take me a couple of weeks to get that money to go and buy more gear. And the way a lot of these insurance policies work, um, mine doesn't because it's actually for photographers, so it's a good one. But a lot of them, if you go and buy something to replace it, maybe you go and buy a cheap camera. So maybe instead of this one, just to tide me over for the travel, I go and buy this one, which is, say, $400, instead of buying the one that's 3000 then the insurance company will say, OK, you've replaced your camera. You've got one. We're going to give you $400. That's not cool. <laughs> so you've got to be very careful with them. Uh, there was a question about what kind of flash you can use with the phone. Um, you need a flash that's either triggered wirelessly or triggered by your Bluetooth. And there are quite a few of those out on the market. You don't tend to see them turning up in camera shops very much because camera shops hate phone cameras. <laughs> Because phone cameras take away 90% of their business. So you kind of understand why they don't like them. But you will find them on eBay. You'll find them on AliExpress. You'll find them on places like that. Lots and lots of different different areas that you can go look for them. So I'd suggest that you just um, Google to find a supplier near you. Now, the little phone shops that you find in shopping centers will probably have them.